Giovanni. The former ground-type gym leader of Viridian City and the first major villain that we encounter in any of the Pokemon games as the leader of the infamous Team Rocket. Giovanni is known for his ruthless nature and his lust for power at all costs. Although his criminal organization is known for its goal to steal Pokemon and sell them for profit in order to achieve world domination, Giovanni himself operates a little differently in that he keeps the strongest of the strongest Pokemon for himself in order to become the most powerful trainer in the world. In his eyes, his subordinates within Team Rocket and the money that they make are merely used as tools to achieve his aims. Despite having an organization to do his dirty work, in practice Giovanni prefers to operate alone, even to the point of abandoning his own son. Eventually, however, he does realize that there is strength in numbers, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Giovanni has made many appearances throughout the main series games and always has been an impressive and very intimidating trainer with a surprisingly large variety of strong Pokemon. He is known as the self-proclaimed strongest trainer, but is this an accurate title? It's time to figure out how strong Giovanni really is and what his best possible team is. It's time to figure out Giovanni's true power. Before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by Amino. Amino is an app that allows you to partake in communities for virtually any interests that you have, including Pokemon. I've used the app myself for years and I find it great for sharing ideas about Pokemon and finding the ideas of others through Amino stories, which are basically like shorter videos that are separated into scenes. For any content that doesn't necessarily fit the mold of YouTube, I'm now creating my very own exclusive Amino stories, so if you want to see more of my content, you can check it out there. I've even got my first two stories up on there now, including a new one where I discuss my top 5 favorite Pokemon champions. All you've got to do is click the link in the description or the pinned YouTube comment or search for Amino apps to download Amino. You can find my stories by searching my username, Silspector, and make sure to follow me and click the bell to be notified when I'm posting new stories. Just like on YouTube, every time you watch my videos, you'll be supporting me, so if you like my content, this is a simple, free way to help me out as a creator and see some exclusive content. The first time we meet Giovanni is in Pokemon Red and Blue in the Celadon City Game Corner, where it turns out Team Rocket not only has a basement hideout, but is also distributing Pokemon as prizes. Upon approaching him after making our way through the hideout, Giovanni says nothing but, I must say, I'm impressed you got here, before immediately challenging us to battle. In this battle, Giovanni begins with a level 25 Onyx, followed by a level 24 Rhyhorn and a level 29 Kangaskhan. A water or grass type Pokemon will help you get past the first two, but the Kangaskhan can serve as quite a challenge without a fighting type to help out. Giovanni is next found in Saffron City in the Sylph Company headquarters. After painstakingly making our way up the skyscraper while defeating Team Rocket grunts, we head towards the final room where we find out that it is Giovanni who has held the president of the company hostage. Upon entering, Giovanni challenges us to a rematch in which he has become far stronger since our last encounter. He starts off with a new level 37 Nidorino, followed by his now level 35 Kangaskhan, his Rhyhorn, which is now at level 37, and a brand new Nidoqueen, which is at level 41. After defeating him, we find out that Team Rocket was after the Master Ball prototype and plans all along, presumably so that they could mass produce them in order to catch all strong Pokemon with ease. Despite us thwarting what is arguably Team Rocket's largest takeover, this encounter isn't the final time that we see Giovanni in these games. In the true final time, we get to see his second identity. Despite the gym in Viridian City being locked and the gym leader being absent for the majority of the game, if we head back there after obtaining the other seven gym badges, this gym is suddenly open again, with the gym leader apparently having returned. Upon getting to the final room, we find out that none other than Giovanni is serving as the de facto gym leader in addition to his role as the leader of Team Rocket. In this battle, Giovanni has become wickedly powerful and starts off with a level 45 Rhyhorn, followed by a new level 42 Dugtrio, his Nidoqueen now at level 44, and a now fully evolved Nidoking at level 45, and a fully evolved Rhydon at a whopping level 50. It's worthy to note that in Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green, the Red and Blue remakes, Giovanni is found in these same three encounters with the same Pokemon at the same levels, but their orders are sometimes switched and they have tougher movesets to counter. The next time we encounter Giovanni is in Red and Blue's third version game, Pokemon Yellow, where he ends up becoming far more powerful than in Red and Blue, with his Pokemon having much better movesets too. Our first battle with him occurs in the Game Corner hideout, where he has a brand new member on his team. He starts out with his level 25 Onyx, followed by a level 24 Rhyhorn, and a brand new level 29 Persian, which more closely aligns him with his anime counterpart, as is the goal of Pokemon Yellow. A similar pattern occurs in the Sylph Company battle, where he has a level 37 Nidorino, a level 37 
Rhyhorn, his Persian is now at level 35, and his Nidoqueen at level 41, which now also has Double Kick for added type coverage against super effective Ice type Pokemon. Whereas Giovanni's best Pokemon in Red and Blue was at level 50, in the Viridian City Gym Battle in Pokemon Yellow, Giovanni's lowest level Pokemon is now at level 50. He starts off with a level 50 Dugtrio, followed by a level 53 Persian, a level 53 Nidoqueen, a level 55 Nidoking, and a level 55 Rhydon, with all four of his Ground-type Pokémon having access to the amazingly powerful Earthquake move now. Within the course of one set of games, Giovanni went from having Pokémon levels in the 20s to Pokémon in the 50s, which is certainly one of the greatest development curves we've seen from any trainer. However, this development curve certainly did not stop here. The next time we see Giovanni is in a very, very interesting situation in the Gold and Silver remakes, Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, despite Giovanni not even making an appearance in the originals. Giovanni can only be found in these games through an in-game event. If you take the promotional event Celebi to the Ilex Shrine, it will suddenly transport the player back in time three years prior to right after Giovanni was defeated by the Kanto protagonist. During this scene, we see Giovanni arguing with Silver, the rival of the Johto games, who is actually revealed to be his son. Giovanni discusses his need to leave and disband Team Rocket after being defeated in order to come back stronger and cites his failure to make use of his subordinate's potential. Celebi then transports us back into the future when it's revealed that Giovanni actually did hear the radio broadcast urging him to return that Team Rocket sent out for him by hijacking the Goldenrod Radio Tower. However, he's prevented from answering the call by the protagonist in battle. In this battle, Giovanni has a level 42 Nidoking, a brand new level 43 Honchkrow, a level 46 Nidoqueen, and a level 40 Kangaskhan. What's really interesting here is that the protagonist of the Johto games didn't actually just beat a weakened version of Team Rocket, but they also defeated Giovanni to prevent his return. The next time we encounter Giovanni is actually in Pokemon Black 2 and White 2, where he is somehow allowed to participate in the Pokemon World Tournament. Giovanni is able to be battled in three different tournament styles and rotates between two different teams of six. Keep in mind that all Pokemon are automatically set to level 50 in the Pokemon World Tournament, but we can see new additions to his Pokemon collection and how competitively viable his Pokemon have become. Interestingly, Giovanni does occupy the Viridian City Gym Leader position at the Kanto Leaders Tournament, in which he now has a fully evolved Rhyperior, a brand new Golem, Nidoking, a new Marowak, a new Sandslash, and his trusty Nidoqueen. In the Type Expert and World Leaders tournaments, Giovanni boasts four brand new Pokemon. He rotates between the following six Pokemon. Rhyperior, a brand new Garchomp, Nidoking, a new Gliscor, Crocodile, and Hippowdon. It's evident that in the time that has passed, Giovanni has not only improved the items and movesets of his Pokemon, but he's also expanded his collection with some very powerful additions from new regions. Giovanni is one of the very few original characters that made an appearance in the newer Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon games. Upon completing the game, we find out that Festival Plaza has been taken over by an evil organization called Team Rainbow Rocket, which has prevented the use of any of the plaza's services. Shortly after the protagonist drives the evildoers out from the Festival Plaza with the help of Sophocles, Team Rainbow Rocket takes over the Aether Foundation instead and name it Team Rocket's Castle. Throughout Team Rocket's Castle, we encounter many villains from past Pokemon games, and we find out that they are each from universes in which their respective team's plans succeeded. After defeating all the villains, we find out who is behind the entire invasion and the formation of Team Rainbow Rocket. None other than Giovanni himself, who, as it turns out, did end up figuring out how to work better as a team by working with the other villains. Giovanni challenges us to battle, and he has some of the most powerful Pokémon we've not only seen him with, but we've seen any NPC with. Giovanni begins with his now level 68 Dugtrio, followed by a level 68 Nidoking, a level 68 Nidoqueen, a level 68 Rhyperior, and finally, a level 70 Mewtwo. Yes, that's right, a Mewtwo. But it only gets more terrifying from here. The Mewtwo also either has the Mewtwo Knight X or the Mewtwo Knight Y Megastone, depending on which version of the game you're playing. Not only are his Pokémon at extremely high levels, but they've also got really strong movesets, too. This isn't the only appearance Giovanni makes in these games, however. He's also featured as a battle program in the Battle Agency in the Festival Plaza, as a boss battle that can be unlocked every 10 grades after Episode Rainbow Rocket is completed. Despite him having some brand new Pokémon in this program, we can safely assume that they are Pokémon that he actually has. 
has, because every other program trainer we see in the battle agencies such as Cynthia and Sophocles all have Pokemon that we've seen them use elsewhere, and three of the six Pokemon he uses have been seen elsewhere too. Keep in mind that in the battle agency all Pokemon are automatically set to level 59 or higher depending on what grade you're at. Giovanni has Dugtrio, followed by a new Arcanine, a new Executor, his Marowak, his Kangaskhan, and a new Gyarados. Importantly, both his Kangaskhan and Gyarados have their respective Mega Stones too, confirming that he not only has access to Mega Evolution with his Mewtwo, but two other Pokemon as well. Giovanni's last appearance in the main series games occurs during the Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee games, which are of course remakes of Pokemon Yellow, and we have the same three situational encounters with him as we did in that game. The first is in the Game Corner hideout where he's got a level 35 Persian and Rhyhorn. The second is in Silphco where he's got a level 39 Persian, Rhyhorn, and Nidoqueen. Finally, he's found in the Viridian City Gym where he's got a level 49 Dugtrio, Nidoqueen, and Nidoking along with a level 50 Rhydon. Since Giovanni disappears and is replaced by Blue after he loses this gym battle, we unfortunately don't get to rematch him at his best as we do with all the other gym leaders. It's time for the moment we've all been waiting for. Using all of his appearances in all of the main series games, let's construct Giovanni's best possible team. The number one choice I think is pretty obvious, his unbelievable Mewtwo from the Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon Rainbow Rocket episode, in which it was at level 70. Mewtwo is of course in the uber tier in competitive battling and Giovanni has incredible moves on it, such as Psy Strike, Psychic, Aura Sphere, and Ice Beam. Although he does have access to both Mega Stones and distinct movesets for each, I don't actually think we're going to use either on his best possible team. You'll see why in a second, but he does of course have the option to depending on the battle. For the second pick, we're going to have to go with his Kangaskhan from the Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon Battle Agency battle with the Kangaskhanite Megastone. Now why put a Megastone on Kangaskhan instead of Mewtwo, you might ask? Well, Mewtwo is already such an overpowered Pokemon being in the uber tier, whereas regular Kangaskhan goes all the way from PU, the worst battling tier, to join it in ubers as a Mega. When Giovanni lacks the high level depth to round out a full team of 6, any opportunity to bring a terribly performing Pokemon all the way up to being one of the best is certainly worth the investment. With moves such as Stab, Priority, Fake Out, and Facade, along with coverage moves like Priority Sucker Punch, Earthquake, and Rock Slide, along with the Parental Bond ability, this thing is an absolute absolute powerhouse. Now being part of the battle agency battle, it is automatically set to level 59 or higher, but we know that Giovanni has had it all the way since Red and Blue, where it was on the very first team of his that we faced. While many of his Pokemon he's used on the same team as it, such as Nidoking, Nidoqueen, and his now fully evolved Rhyperior, are level 68 plus in Ultra Sun and Moon. Plus, Sophocles is also a boss battle in the battle agency, and despite his Pokemon being set to level 59 plus, we know that they're all level 67 in reality from the champion defense battle we have with him, meaning they're closest to the second battle agency grade tier at level 69 or higher. Plus, we all know Giovanni has taken great care to train Kangaskhan since it has the ability to Mega Evolve in the first place. Given all these factors, I think it's safe to say that Kangaskhan follows this pattern and is around the second tier as well, at approximately level 68. For the third pick, we're going to have to go with Giovanni's Nidoking from the Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon Rainbow Rocket Battle, which is at level 68. Nidoking is in the UU tier of competitive battling and has some great moves in Giovanni's care, such as Stab Poison Jab, Sludge Wave, Earth Power, and Earthquake, along with tons of coverage moves such as Flamethrower, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, and many more, meaning it could pull off being a great mixed attacker. This thing provides great coverage, diversity, and team synergy for Giovanni's team. The fourth spot is going to go to Giovanni's Gyarados from the Ultra Sun and Ultra Ultra Moon Battle Agency match. Gyarados is currently in the UUBL tier in competitive battling, meaning it's above the underused tier but doesn't quite make the overused or OU tier. As for levels, we're stuck with the level 59 plus minimum, and unlike Kangaskhan, we've never seen his Gyarados before, so we'll try and be very conservative and say that that's the minimum level it's at. Giovanni's got great potential moves on this thing such as Dragon Dance, Stab Waterfall, as well as Crunch, Earthquake, Ice Fang, and Stone Edge. It provides some great type diversity, and its major weakness, Electric, is more than covered by Giovanni's plethora of ground types, whereas defensively, it takes care of water and ice type moves coming at Giovanni's ground type Pokemon. The second 
second last best team spot is going to go to Giovanni's Nido Queen from the Rainbow Rocket episode at level 68. Nido Queen is currently in the upper RU tier of competitive battling. Like Nido King, it has some great coverage with moves like Stab Sludge Wave and Earth Power, along with moves like Surf and Flamethrower, and its psychic weakness is pretty well covered by Mewtwo. Giovanni could definitely put Stealth Rock on this thing as well, since we've seen him either have the TM or use a Move Tutor for Dugtrio, either of which he can also do for Nido Queen. And the final spot is going to go to Giovanni's Rhyperior also from the Rainbow Rocket episode at level 68. Rhyperior is in the RU tier and Giovanni has some great moves on it like Stab, Earthquake, and Stone Edge, along with Megahorn for coverage, Thunder Punch, and Hammer Arm. Now Giovanni does have a few Pokemon that very well could fit on this team, with the first being his level 68 Dugtrio. This thing could take the place of Nidoqueen and work as a relatively quick Arena Trap lead with Stealth Rock, but overall it's pretty gravely outclassed given that it's untiered and it's super frail. Next is Giovanni's Garchomp from the Pokemon World Tournament, which is in the OU tier and I desperately wanted to include it on his best team, but its moves give us no indication whatsoever that it's above level 50. And this same problem goes for his Gliscor, which unfortunately doesn't have the Poison Heal ability, Crocodile, and Hippowdon. Finally, his level 59 plus Arcanine is in the RU tier and could provide some extra coverage, but its weaknesses to water and ground just add more of the same weakness in Giovanni's team, and it's outclassed by Gyarados for its role. Overall, depending on the levels, Giovanni does have six other Pokemon that could work well on his team, meaning he's got great depth in his variety of Pokemon. Well, there we go everyone, we have discovered Giovanni's true power and unveiled his strongest possible team in the main series games. If you enjoyed this video and are looking forward to more from this series, be sure to leave a like, share it on social media, and subscribe with notifications on by hitting that bell icon if you haven't already. Don't forget to comment down below with what trainer you wish to see featured next. The comment with the most likes will pick the trainer for the next trainer's episode and will be featured on screen. Also, don't forget to check out the Amino link in the description to check out my exclusive content. In the meantime, feel free to check out some of the other True Power episodes we've done so far. This has been Silph Spectre, and I'll see you guys next time for some more true power.